What's up everybody, Noble Comics here to talk about the five most underrated characters in Dragon Ball. Whenever I say underrated, I mean these are characters who are underappreciated, generally looked down on by the community unjustly, or are underpowered or discussed, or their power is downplayed when it comes to versus battles and stuff like that, typically. Or in the series itself, they're sort of pushed to the side. But with all that said, let's get into the top five. Starting with number five, we have Piccolo. Now, I'm just going to get it out of the way. Piccolo is probably my favorite Dragon Ball character, so I'm definitely biased towards him. But I definitely think that he is in an underrated state and has been for a while. Now, at one point, Piccolo was part of the big three. It was Goku, it was Vegeta, and Piccolo. Those were the three most powerful. They were very impressive. They were the coolest characters around. Uh, there was no doubt about his power. And I'll say that went up well into the Cell arc, right? Because... We saw Piccolo fight Frieza. We saw Piccolo fight Cell and the androids and stuff like that. He had some great, some of the best fights in the whole series. Came from special beam cannon. You know, his special attacks are very cool also. He had a very cool way of powering up by, you know, fusing with other people and stuff like that. He was a cool character. Was. And even his origin where he stems from King Piccolo, right? The, the best villain of the original series. Sort of what really made the original series. All this to say, he had, he has had great showings throughout the years. I think his underrating really started during the Boo Saga. I don't think it's a real secret that Piccolo kind of sucked during the Boo Saga. I don't think he really did much. He had no good showings during that arc. And then going into Super, it was kind of the same thing because obviously Super focused more on Goku and Vegeta, right? And, and sort of their journeys of getting more powerful and the God Key and dealing with the angels and the gods of destruction. And all that stuff was more focused on them. But it felt like Piccolo had fallen from the big three. And you could say maybe that's justified because he doesn't have God Key. He shouldn't be up there with them. And, and you know, I'm kind of all for that also. But there was definitely an effort, right, by the creators to pull up the rest of the Z Fighters towards that power cap that Goku and Vegeta had reached. And I just feel like Piccolo in his ultimate form wasn't really there. He felt like he wasn't in the top three, like maybe he's in the top five after Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Gohan. Then maybe we have Piccolo all the way over here. During the Tournament of Power, he didn't really do anything cool. I don't think he had any real good showings there. And then the big thing, right, is whenever we're getting up to Ultra Instinct tier power, right? Goku had his new form that you know, he was pushed to the limits by Jiren. Vegeta has his new form. He was pushed to his limits. We had... Gohan reached his new form with his, you know, inner beast waking up. And then Piccolo wishes for power. He doesn't achieve power through some big battle or anything. He wishes for power. Now, to be fair, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, he wishes that his inner potential was released. So it's power that already exists inside him that's just being released. But it's still not as cool, you know, for the character, then if he had reached that power on his own through training or through some big fight where he's pushed and he's forced to reach and reach this level that no one, no one has ever reached before for, for the Namekians, but we didn't get that. But I can't say that he's the most underrated by any means because, of course, he's one of the most popular characters in the series. Moving on, we've got Kefla. Now, this might just be me, but I don't ever think of Kefla as being all that powerful. I don't really think about her at all. Even though she was maybe the breakout character from Dragon Ball Super, definitely one of the biggest breakout characters from Super. Because look, I know that she's popular, but I never think of her as being that powerful. I, I usually forget that she was the one who pushed Goku beyond Super Saiyan Blue into his UI shimmer form. I forget what, the, what it's actually called. But she was the one who pushed him past Super Saiyan Blue in the in the anime. And for that reason, she's like one of the most powerful beings in the entire Dragon Ball universe that we've ever seen, right? She's got to be like top three, right? Or top four, something like that. Now, in the manga, she was less impressive. She was fighting against Gohan. But Gohan in the manga, I believe, was more powerful. But she's definitely around Super Saiyan Blue, below Super Saiyan Blue in the manga, and obviously above it in the anime. 
Again, to the point that she's probably one of the most powerful characters in the series going off those feats. She was incredibly impressive during the Tournament of Power. And, you know, maybe it was a little bit unrealistic to a degree where she got that powerful that quickly. Like, she wasn't even like a Super Saiyan. And then she is up to the power of rivaling Super Saiyan Blue and surpassing Super Saiyan Blue. That's a little, you know, okay, sure, whatever. But you can't avoid the fact that she had great showings. And I know she's popular. Maybe everybody else knows this and not me or, or thinks about this but and not me. But I never think of her that way, as being that powerful. And I think maybe she suffers and she's not thought about that way because she was used to promote Goku's new power. Where she was not the focus of the fight between the two, Goku reaching this new form was the focus, right? Versus in the manga, it was just her fighting Gohan, and that was a good fight and everything like that. And it was those two fighting, but the fight in the anime is like explicitly the focus and, and purpose is to showcase Goku's new power. And for that reason, the focus is not on Kefla and being impressive. So yes, all that said, she is very powerful. She is very popular. But do we really remember her as being like the third most powerful person in the Tournament of Power? You know, not really. So I think that generally her power is thought of as being lower than it actually is. Maybe she should be more popular too. Moving on to number three, one of the, the third most underrated character in Dragon Ball, we have Goten. Now, there's a lot to be said about Goten because this is Goku's second son. And right off the bat, he, he obviously does not get nearly the love that the first son got. I mean, you look at Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Gohan was such a pivotal, important character throughout that entire series, especially, of course, through the Cell arc. There was a huge focus on him, on him being more powerful than Goku, on this potential that he had, on his ability to fight major villains like Cell. Then we get to Goten, and he doesn't get that. He never had his Cell moment. He always is playing second fiddle. Most of the time, he's not playing anything at all. It seems like he just pisses around for the most part and, and does nothing and is so unimportant that nobody cares about what he's doing ever. Um, he seems like a forgotten character for the most part. He's extremely underutilized, but he is very powerful. He's the youngest Super Saiyan ever. His power potential should be higher than both Gohan and Goku, making him the most powerful Saiyan in history, potentially. But we never see that. He's just completely forgotten about. I think what they wanted to replace Goku with Goten, and that just didn't work out. And so what, they just, they just throw the character to the curb and just forget about him? I mean, he is like the definition of a side character. I mean, and he was a side character before Super, right? He was he was in the show, you know, during like the Boo Saga and everything. That was cool. Um, he was a side character then. But in Super, he's like doing some like, whenever he's actually in there, because for the most part, he's not. But he's like doing some little slice of life loser thing and you know where he's in high school and he's like 16 now and he's just having fun and it's like he's so unserious and he's so underpowered from where he should be like at that age versus gohan at that age he's he's just a nothing character he's totally forgotten totally sidelined a nothing character that nobody cares about his story and his potential that could have been there especially again you look at what they did with gohan versus what they did with him it's tragic of what could have been. Gohan, of course, obviously gets all the love. Goten gets squat. Goten is nowhere near like Goku's power level. Whereas if this was Gohan at this edge and everything, he would be right there if not surpassing Goku's power level. I think it was just a huge missed opportunity here. We were supposed to get another Goku, another Gohan, and that just didn't work out at all. And I kind of get that if the, if the character didn't work out. But this is a potentially very cool character who gets nothing and is relegated to just fusing with trunks, and that's like his whole thing. He, as a character, is just not there, which is tragic. Number two, we have Yamcha. Now, look, 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 I know. Yamcha, a, a lot of people are probably saying are number one. A lot of people are probably saying shouldn't be on the list. He's not underrated. He just sucks. But let's talk about Yamcha, okay? He's one of the OGs, one of the actual OGs from the original series. He was there in Z from the very beginning as well. 
He's an original Dragon Ball character who used to be very cool. Now, the problem with Yamcha is the problem we've seen with other characters is that he is just power crept out of the series. The creep of power from Goku and other characters, it's just skyrocketed so high that normal human characters like that just can't keep up realistically, right? Because you look back, he used to be very cool. He was a really good fighter. He was powerful at the time. But the fact that he is just a human really holds you back. The power cap is just too high, right? Or, or he can't keep up. And because of that, he became a joke. He became a cuck. Thanks, Vegeta. Uh, he was a punching bag for the most part. His most famous appearances now are when he gets murdered, <laughs> you know, by a Cyberman. He is the most memed on character without a doubt. He's very unpopular, realistically. I mean, people like to make fun of him, but he is pretty unpopular overall. He's basically out of the series for the most part, right? He makes some appearances, but realistically, he's not going to be contributing in any way. But again, in reality, he's extremely skilled and extremely powerful. And you know that he's underrated because they'll compare Yamcha to other anime universes, right? And they'll be like, well, could, could Deku beat Yamcha? Could you know, Naruto beat Yamcha? It's like, look, I know we like to meme on this guy, but Yamcha could still beat like any other anime universe. He could, he could beat the entire One Piece universe, the entire Naruto, my hero, whatever it is, he could still be, he's still super powerful. He just got left behind because the power creep was so insanely high. I think overall, he probably just deserved better. Now, I know you can't bring everybody with you because the cast is pretty large, so some people got to get left behind, and he was one of them who got left behind. But he is actually not a bad character, and you look at him from the original series from early Z, he's not a bad character at all. He's just not that powerful, comparatively. Now, before we get to number one, Dragon Ball is such a vast universe. When I was making this list, there were so many characters I want to put on here. So let's roll into some honorable mentions, and then we'll get to number one. So some honorable mentions, we have Yajirobe, who of course is the GOAT. He's got the Senzu Beans. He's awesome. We don't really see him anymore, and, and maybe it's because he's too powerful, right? With the Senzu Beans, you can do anything, man, if you just have an endless supply of those. So I get it, but I think he could use some more love. Chi-Chi, I think, is underrated because she also is very powerful. She's a very skilled fighter, and I think we kind of forget that because she is relegated to the wife role. But she's very powerful. She trained Goten. Like, she is quite powerful as well. And again, in the early series, she was a very skilled fighter. Mr. Satan, I think it's tough to call him underrated. He's very popular, but he is also a joke character, despite being, you know, one of the greatest human martial artists on Earth. I'd say Android 19. I think we remember, like, all the other androids, but Android 19 is kind of left behind, and I think that he's cool. And then Pan, lastly, I think Pan is probably overhated for what she is overall. All that said, let's get to number one. The single most underrated character in all of Dragon Ball has to be has to be my boy Tien. Tien is easily should be the most powerful human in Dragon Ball. He should be number one and he's not. Tien has been fumbled by the Dragon Ball creative team. I think intentionally. I think they just don't like the character. They don't want to use him. They don't want to respect him. And every other character gets a handout. Tien doesn't get a handout. Every other character gets treated with some degree of respect. Tien doesn't get treated with a degree of respect. This is a character that really has been screwed over, in my opinion, in Dragon Ball, more so than anybody else, like I said. Should be the most powerful human. He's got some of the best and coolest techniques that we've seen in the entire series. You know, growing new arms, doing the solar flare, which then Krillin stole. He's got such a cool style and the way he fights and everything like that. He's got a cool teammate, you know, who rolls around with him. It's very cool. He's visually very interesting also. He's had some good showings over the years, especially early on. This is kind of like Yamcha. Early on, of course, he did extremely well. He was a big threat to people like Goku and everything like that. But, but, you go over to Super, and as the series went on, obviously, everybody else got more and more powerful. He was sort of being left behind in the same way that Yamcha was, but he was still holding in there. We all remember Tien holding off Cell, blasting him to the ground like a hundred times. That was awesome. That was a great contribution during the Cell Saga. Again, we've seen him do other cool stuff. He's without a doubt powerful, but you go into like Super 
during where they're pulling everybody up to higher levels of power, like they pulled Roshi up, they pulled Gohan up, all these characters, they're pulling them up to higher levels of power, and Tien doesn't get the same treatment. Tien should be the most powerful out of all of them because he is one of the only people who has been consistently training non-stop. He has his own dojo, he's training all the time, and yet he's less powerful than Roshi? Seriously? I mean, he got treated like trash in Super Bowl. While Toriyama is handing out power-ups to every character, Tien doesn't really get one. He, he gets trashed, he gets trashed multiple times, he has bad showings in the Tournament of Power, he gets trashed there. And again, especially when you compare it to Roshi, and I'll say Gohan also, it's obvious that they just they don't care about Tien at all. Because he should be far above Roshi, if you ask me. And again, Roshi fought Jiren. Roshi took out uh, a combatant in the Tournament of Power. Roshi was performing extremely well. Tien, not so much. And Gohan, because if you remember, Gohan said that when he's training, he's now focusing more on his human side rather than his Saiyan side. And that's where his beast form comes from. He's tapping into his human side of power. And it's like, okay, if the human side of power is that powerful, then how come humans like Tien or Yamcha aren't more powerful? Why can't they reach this level of power? Why isn't Tien more powerful if he's getting the only one actually training consistently out of the whole group so they downplay his power they downplay his skill and his experience they downplay just his appearances in general because he barely shows up when he does show up he's obviously like the most side character that he can be he doesn't have any agency doesn't do anything cool the focus is not on him in any way versus again you look back at the original series, there's a big focus on him because he was like the most powerful villain we had seen. In Z, there's a focus on him to a degree, right? He, he had cool moments where obviously it's not called the TN show, right? We don't expect it to all be about him, but he had cool moments where his character got to flex a little bit. And that has not been the case for a long time. And in Super, I think he was treated very poorly and is nowhere near the character that he should be today if he was treated properly. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Who do you think is the most underrated character in Dragon Ball history? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.